Welcome back. Today we are going over the expander control. To get started with this tutorial, we need a simple grid with two columns, the second width auto, a stack panel with a couple of text blocks to represent things like name and description, and then add a rectangle to your second column, make it a different color, and give it width of about 125. Okay, so the expander control in C Sharp is pretty versatile and very simple to use. Sometimes it's used to hide away tiny bits of text, other times it's used to hide away entire portions of your UI. The easiest way to use it is to create an expander and put something inside of it. So let's put our description text blocks inside of an expander. And you'll see that by default, with no other properties, our expander has eaten our text block and has a button facing up or down depending on if it is expanded or not. So when we run, we can click this button to expand our expander and show us what is inside of it. So it works right out of the box very simply. The first important expander property to know is header. And that's so you can show your user what the expander is hiding because right now it's just a button with an arrow and we don't know what clicking it is going to show us. So we could say things like more details and that will put a tiny little description beside our expander that says, hey, clicking this button is going to give us more details, and maybe that will show us our description. So this functionality alone can be extremely useful in a lot of applications, but another great use of an expander is hiding portions of your UI. So let's put an expander down here, and let's put our rectangle in column one inside of it. Let's move our grid column equals one out of our rectangle and into our expander tag, because now the expander is column one and the rectangle is in the expander. And now since we're putting the expander in a column, we don't want it to go down and up. What we want it to do is expand a direction. We want it to go left because we're putting it on the right side and we want to expand out to the left. And now because we set this column width to auto, you can see that the column shrunk down to the size of the expander. And when the expander is expanded, then it will take the size of what is inside of it. So you can see it expanding that direction. So if we run, now our details pane over here, or whatever pane this might be, is hidden in our expander. And when we click this button, it will show that pane. And then we can click this to put it back. So you probably noticed when we expanded our expander, our rectangle fill shows up here, but our expander sticks out with a white background. And that is because the expander's default background is transparent. So here we have a stack panel. If we put the background to be, say, light blue on there, you can see the expander is transparent, so it blends in very nicely with the background of the stack panel. But we put our expander inside of a grid with no background, and then put a child in here that has a background. So if you do that, and you don't want your expander to be in something with a background, you may want to change the background of your expander itself to match the background of whatever is inside of it so that it blends in a little bit better. Also, the expander has a default border, so you can see the white border around it. Now, if you don't want that border or you want it to be a little bit different, you could either set the border brush, which is the color of the border, or if you don't want it at all, you could set the border thickness to zero and you'll see the border go away and that will make your expander and the pane itself blend in just a little bit better with your UI. So now we know the basics of how to use the expander in XAML, let's talk about how to use it programmatically. Now you don't always need to do that. Generally, the user is going to click the expander button to expand it when they want to, but sometimes you want something to happen automatically. Say the user changes their selection in a list or click a button, you want that expander to open itself up. To do that, we need to access the expanders is expanded property. Let's start by adding a name. Let's call this expander details. Let's add a button into our stack panel. We'll call this button details. We'll give it a width of say 100, height 25, content details. So now we have a details button. We know who our expander is. So let's add a click handler to our button. And when we go to our code behind, what we want to do is access expander details dot is expanded. Now you can set this because it is a property. So what we want to do when they click the details is set it either true or false. In this case, let's just toggle it. So if it is expanded, it's going to collapse. And if it's collapsed, it is going to expand. 
And as simple as that, this button will now open or close our expander the same way as the expander button itself. So you could do this off of any event, anything that happens in your code, you can automatically make this open or close as needed. Next up, we're going to learn about the scroll viewer control, which really complements the last few controls when dealing with resizing or hiding things on our UI. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Happy coding, and as always, until next time, take care.